In this video, I'm going to talk about hydrolytic tests. So hydrolysis is the breakdown of a substance using water. And you can break that down into hydrolysis. Hydro is water. Lysis means to break apart. So in hydrolytic tests, we're looking for the presence of an enzyme that can break down what we're testing on. We have three different hydrolytic tests that I'm going to talk about today. The first one is starch hydrolysis. So there's starch in this plate. If the microorganism produces the enzyme amylase, then it's going to be able to digest the starch in this medium. And we're going to streak two lines of growth on the plate and incubate this. After incubation, we're going to add iodine because iodine forms a complex with starch. It'll be really dark in the areas where starch exists and it'll be really clear or brighter in color. You'll be able to see light through in the areas where starch does not exist. So if it's positive, you're going to see the clearing around the growth after iodine is added. Casein hydrolysis uses milk agar. Casein is a protein that's found in milk, and this is evaluating the microorganism's ability to produce certain proteases, and proteases are enzymes that digest proteins. If they're able to digest the proteins in the milk, you're going to see a clearing around the growth. And you don't have to add anything to the milk agar to be able to see it, you'll just be able to see clear around the area of growth. And the last one I'm going to discuss is the urea. So urea is um, found in urine of mammals and in urea it's testing for the microorganism's ability to produce the enzyme urease. Urease digests urea to produce a base. If that base is produced it's going to cause a bright pink color change so you're going to see this media turn a bright pink in color. So to inoculate, we're going to inoculate all three of these with the same type of bacterium. And just for proper technique, I'm going to go ahead and label the plates before I actually inoculate. So I'm going to put E. coli on all of these. And I'm going to write today's date. Also going to label my slant. And now that they're all labeled, I'm going to flame sterilize my loop. I'm going to grab an E. coli broth culture, aseptically transfer some bacteria. To the plate, and I'm just going to draw two lines down the plate. So there's one line, I'm going to grab some more bacteria, and here's my second line. And because I'm using the same species, and I know that my species is a pure culture, I'm just going to keep on inoculating the next plate. Again, this one, I'm going to streak another two lines down the center of the plate. And finally, I'm going to inoculate the slant. And inoculating this one, I'm just going to start where the slant begins and paint it up the surface of the slant. Now these are going to be incubated. The plates get incubated upside down and the tube is just going to be incubated on a rack in the incubator 37 degrees Celsius for uh, 24 to 48 hours. So now I'm going to tell you about the results for our enzymatic tests. So for the starch test and the casein test, the results are really difficult to see. So what I'm going to do is post some pictures that you can look at of those test results. But urea was a pretty obvious one. So urea, when utilized, it produces a base. And you can see this hot pink color is a positive result. If we compare this to our uninoculated tube, so this one doesn't have any bacteria in it, so negative control, you can see um, the pretty pink color that is produced, we have a positive result.